that next week's coronation of King Charles will be a global spectacle. Tens of millions will be watching as Charles is crowned in a ceremony steeped in a thousand years of regal history. But judging by the headlines this week, the monarchy's problems lie not in the past, but the future. A shocking new poll says 78% of Britain's young people don't care about the monarchy. Almost 40% of them would even prefer an elected head of state. And actually, who can blame them for having a dim view of the royal family or the monarchy, given that two of our most famous young royals have waged a three-year war on the institution. They weaponized the culture of validation for victimhood and convinced a generation of young people the monarchy is an antiquated, evil institution. And less than a fortnight before the biggest day in the monarchy's recent history, they're again out in force, making sure the headlines are all about them. Our next speaker has an unmatched eye for a good photograph. I've experienced his talent firsthand as he has captured many meaningful milestones for me and my family. There's Shire retiring Megan, uh, ostensibly introducing her photographer friend at a talk this week, but of course, unsubtly debuting a new look that apparently we're told is more paltro than princess. Either way, we haven't seen her since Harry's acidic memoir pumped 416 pages of poison into the royal debate. So why now? Well, I think we can guess, right? Well, earlier this week, we were treated to, well, I don't know what you call these pictures, but we're supposed to believe these were a surprise. They had Duke and Duchess at a basketball game in LA. It's the Lakers. I was there myself two weeks ago. And trust me, you don't get caught unawares if you're a famous person at the Lakers. They tell you in advance. The cameras will be on you. Do you mind if they use you? Yeah, they knew. Now, about the same time here, 5 a.m. in Britain, Prince William was laying flowers at an Anzac Day dawn service. So the message from California is clear. You can dress up in your dusty robes and pout through ancient rituals for antique politicians, but we're the real royals. We're young, we're spontaneous, we're free. And, of course, Prince Harry has launched another privacy-shattering projectile at his family. Newspaper front pages are plastered with details of a private settlement. Let's emphasise that again. A private settlement by Prince William, his brother, the details of which have only become public because Harry has chosen to invade his brother's privacy and tell everybody. Even on the eve of the coronation, he's chosen to cause deep embarrassment and potential harm to his family. Harry's book and the six-hour Netflix documentary unleashed unprecedented volumes of private, secret, intimate details about royal conversations into the public domain for breathtaking pots of cash. The reality is that the biggest and most ruthless invader of royal privacy, however, in the monarchy's history, is Harry. Maybe it's time the royal family sued Harry for invading their privacy. Because the damage that these two are doing is becoming very clear. Protesters chanting, not my king, tried to disrupt a visit by the king and queen to Liverpool today. Not my king! 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 But, and it's a really good but, this, there's some hope. Look at what these school children did, who were there, but had other ideas. I love it. That's the future, surely. Now, joining me now is the host of the Big Fish podcast, Benson Matthews, and Alex O'Connor, who is the host of the Within Reason podcast and is an anti-monarchist, plus writer and commentator Larissa Kennedy. Well, welcome to all of you. So, Spencer, you... I mean, you're related to the royal family. Um, your brother's married to Pippa Middleton, who's obviously Kate's sister. Let's get out of the way. So you're not a completely impartial observer, but you're a monarchist like me. You believe in the royal family. This poll about young people, what do you make of it? Um, well, I suppose it's, 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 a high, it's a high number of people who are claiming not to care. It's not a high number of people who are claiming they would want something else. What is the number, do you know, of, of people who would prefer the alternative? Well, about 40% be... indicated they may not be opposed to having some form of republic, a president, whatever. Yeah, I mean, which is exactly... I mean, the alternative would be to have an elected head of state, which is... That's what you would prefer, is it? Yeah, you described. You, you mentioned earlier that the the poll was shocking and said that some people would even prefer an elected mm. head of state, as if this is some kind of radical idea. Well, it is for this country. I don't think it's a surprise that young people in this country are quite mystified by this 
bizarre relic of our constitution that still relies on the notion that hereditary political office is legitimate uh, is, is a legitimate institution. Do so you think it's, they've it's, looked at, for example, the premiership of Boris Johnson and Liz Truss over here, or Donald Trump in America, thought, you know what we need? Get rid of the stable royal family at the head of our country. Let's go for a Boris and a Don. You think people have done that in this country? Well, unfortunately... Do you think that's what British people actually think about elected officials? In other words, be careful what you wish for. We have... They're not elected, no. They have no real executive power. But what they do provide, in my, in my estimation, they provide us with something unique. Now, when King Charles gets coron crowned uh, at the coronation in a week and a half's time, the whole world will watch and they will see our country at its best, doing what very few places can do. The pomp, the pageantry, the military procession. And it's something to make us all feel proud. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing, but don't do it on my dime. I, I don't see it's why... It's not on your dime. It, it is. This is being why is funded, it on your this dime? This is being funded by the taxpayer. Don't Tourism forget. pays for it. Tourism, look, if it were true that this that is money true. is essentially going to pay for itself, then why is it that the government and, uh, and the king felt it necessary to say that this would be a service that had value for the taxpayer? Why are the taxpayers even involved at all? No, no. Why can't the royal but family the taxpayer gets the money and back. pay themselves yeah, but back the with the money that we're told? The taxpayer gets the money back from tourism. That's the point. Yeah. So the, the net cost of the royal family is a positive. It don't cost us anything. So that argument never washes with me because they actually bring more than they cost. So then you're down to, I don't like the fact these people are privileged and live in palaces and so on. But they perform hundreds of duties a year. I mean, you know this better than anyone uh, and about what, the amount of... Amount of what, let's, let's just bring uh, Spencer back in. You know better than anybody the amount of work they all do, right? I mean, they work hard. Well, no, well just to be clear, I'm not, you know... You know I'm, I, don't, I can't speak from, you know, for them. But you're or, aware of the work I, they do. As an observer... Um, they're a very hard-working family that symbolise mm. patriotism, uh, you know, in this country. And, you know, the majority of them have dedicated their entire lives to, to service, to, to, to help Britain. You know, they, they, that's, that's all they really try to do. I, when, when, you know, firstly, I didn't realise that we were debating this, to be honest, but what would the alternative be in your eyes that would be better than... Yeah, we're, than often, we're often told that we don't really have a good alternative to monarchy in this country, but I feel like we're already living it. I'm told, on the one hand, when I complain about the illegitimate influence that the monarchy has over the politics of this country, that they don't really have any power at all. They don't really do anything. They cut a few ribbons here and there, except for the legal and tax exemptions that they have, the influence over the prime minister. Perhaps this is true. You're missing, they, the, you're missing the point. They, maybe they really don't have the power, but you're I can't missing, be you're missing the, no, you're missing the same point. token you're missing that the point. somehow, if I therefore suggest that we should get rid of them altogether, no, they're thinking... somehow integral to the upkeep of the political system. No, they're not. Royalists seem to want to have their no, no, I don't, cake I don't argue. Too. I don't argue that. All that is ceremonial. These are, these are difficult to I, All that stuff is ceremonial to me. They don't have any executive power. They don't make the laws that we, that we abide uh, and live by. What they provide, and we saw this clearly in the COVID pandemic when the Queen went on national television and acted like a, a national comfort blanket, they are there as a constant above all the political fray and turmoil. And when we have the big royal events, there are millions and tens of millions around the world who look at our country in a favourable light. And you cannot calculate, to me, that value just in what you think it costs to put them in palaces and things, because the value, in my view, if you take it in totality, outweighs that. And that's where their value lies to me. Let me bring in Larissa, who's been listening patiently. Larissa, you're a young woman. What do you think of the royal family? Are you violently opposed to them? I think it's not necessarily important to dwell on my personal opinion, but looking at the statistic that you've shared there, I think it's interesting that you know in the in the video prior this bringing in harry and megan into this is bringing all sorts into this when really young people not caring about the royal family is because young people have so much to care about right now we care about the intergenerational uh, economic gap between uh, those who have come before us and being a generation that may not do uh, better than those uh, prior we care about uh, climate breakdown and the fact that we may not even have a planet uh, to have royals on we care about the housing crisis, we care about the cost of living crisis, there is not space within the Overton window to, to then discuss the fact that, you know, is the are these pompous displays of excess, displays of excess rather, an insult to the widening gap between rich and poor and the poorest in our society? To even question this is seen as hating Britain when really it's about wanting the best for everyone in Britain. So I do struggle with this idea that, oh, 
uh, there are certain things that have happened recently that have caused young people uh, to move away from liking the royal family, when really it's that we're not steeped in all of the nostalgia uh, that I think lots well, of yeah, people Well, yeah, that, except that I would argue this, right? We've become a far more multicultural society than we were, say, 30, 40 years ago. And there's no doubt that in the polling, for example, on Meghan and Harry, young people tend to feel sympathy and believe what they're saying about the royal family. Older people over 40 don't. I mean, the, the polls are very clear and very split. And my argument would be that their allegations in particular about racism in the royal family and callous disregard for mental health and so on, which were pushed very hard and now seem to be a massive retreat, uh, that those allegations caused enormous damage with young people, particularly perhaps young non-white people, in Britain who believe the royal family, because Meghan Markle said they were, are a bunch of racists. I was going to ask you if that was a dog whistle, but you actually just explicitly said that yourself. So you are... Let me I just said get what? This you, believe, you believe that because there are black and brown young people in the country, mm. they hate the way that the UK functions. Is that what? Is that your argument? I, I, did I, they, they hate what? They hate the way that the UK functions with the royal family. Is that is that the no person no no arm? sorry you've missed you've obviously misheard me. Before you throw <laughs> phrases like dog brown. whistle, before you fr throw phrases like dog whistle around, maybe listen to what I actually say. What I said I what, yeah. what I said was <laughs> uh, what I said was young people in the polling tend to be a lot more sympathetic and a lot more believing of the allegations of racism by Meghan Markle and Prince Harry against the royal family. And that may be one of the explanations why they are in favour of perhaps getting rid of the monarchy altogether. So, in my view, it's been damaging what Meghan and Harry have said, and now they're backtracking from what they said, so they never meant to say there was any racism, but actually we all heard what they said and it caused damage. That's not a dog whistle, I'm just revealing facts. It's not a dog whistle, it's an explicit statement. Oh, I hang on, a statement of what? One, what, do you, what do you think I'm saying? Yeah. The implication that black and brown young people are the reason that 80% of young people don't care about the monarchy. I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> okay. I didn't say that. I said one of the reasons why young people may not have a good feeling about the monarchy is because of the allegations, not just about racism, but also about mental health. So you've got to listen to what I'm saying before throwing around phrases like I dog whistle. Otherwise, you. otherwise you can jump to rather extraordinary conclusions and make rather bizarre allegations. Knows. I'm listening to what you're saying, and I also know the links that you are hoping that listeners will create. So I'm just, I'm just being real about it, as you like. Well, you're to, not, though, are you? Um, you'll be. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Larissa. What you're not being is let's real. Let's get back to the real Cause, issue. Because viewers can actually hear what we're saying. Let's so <laughs> you hear, which is that young people are not only, I think, separately from talking about Meghan and Harry. I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think they're looking at countries like Barbados, perhaps, who are distancing themselves from the monarchy. And it gives us a fresh opportunity to actually discuss the history of monarchy, not with a lens that is riddled with nostalgia, but critically. And that is to say that, yes, much has been achieved, but at what expense? And there are lots of young people and students who support campaigns around reparations, around decolonization. And so to do that, and at the same time, to not have a critical lens towards monarchy is incongruent. It doesn't make any sense. So I think it's really important that we're seeing that young people's opinions, and particularly um, young people who are criticising monarchy, isn't about recent events. It's about an, an, a, a historical analysis. All right, well, that that, is all right, I don't agree with you about it not being connected, but I, I, I'm sure it's partly both. Um, Spencer, you do a great podcast. I've been on it. You talk a lot about mental health on that. You talked about all that yourself. Do young people just look at all this stuff through a different lens to people of my age? Am I young people? You're sort of in the middle. I'm, 30, <laughs> I, I'm, th I'm 34 years old. You're nearly middle-aged, so, you know, but, but what's your general sense about how generations... I mean, is this a generational thing? Do older people have a different view of the royal family and monarchy to young people, partly because of things like that? Um, I, I suppose so. I mean, most of my guests on Big Fish are, um, are slightly older. Um, and, and, you know, typically they've had very interesting stories of how they rose to be successful, mm. and lots of that has come through hardship and failure, and it's how they've navigated, um, you know, treacherous uh, and difficult times to become who they've become. Um, you know, I, I can't really speak to the, the mental health of the, the younger generation, but mm. I certainly feel um, things might be a bit softer nowadays.
That's is that my what you're asking? Like, well, yeah, actually, yes. Yeah. In a way, I think that is what I'm I'm getting at, really. And I, you know, I don't want to always bring these royal debates back to Meghan and Harry. But part of my problem with what they did is they weaponized things like racism and mental health, and it caused a lot of damage to the reputation of the royals, not just here but abroad. And I think, I mean, just to bring you back in, Alex, there's no doubt in my mind that has contributed to young people, and particularly, I suspect, younger people of colour in this country who have bought in perhaps to, by believing what they've been hearing, that the royal family has a group of racists amongst them. And that's not going to make you like an institution. It's going to make you want to get rid of it. Sure, well, I, I, I wouldn't know. There are a few things I find less interesting in this world than the, 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 the sort of private affairs of Harry and Meghan, or indeed right. the public affairs of them either. But the problems of the monarchy predate these two individuals. I mean, there are plenty of ways to respond to what you were saying earlier to engender national spirit and buttress the economy that don't involve subscription to a hereditary, a controversial hereditary dynasty whose right to rule is still, if I might be allowed to remind you, officially legitimized by the authority of an Anglican god that doesn't exist. I, I'm sorry, I just can't take this seriously. I understand so you're why an they atheist have atheist anti-monarchy. I understand why they have to keep up with the crowns and the capes, because mm. without these, who are these people? Nothing more than thinly Well, I might say the same about you. I mean, who, are you? who are you, an atheist anti-monarchist, to tell me how this country should be run? Right, right. I think Why only, do you I think have more the only rights? The qualification a person needs to criticise the head of state is citizenry. Within that, head of, within that state, I'd be quite concerned if you disagreed with that. I think that, look... If, with, with what? If you thought that you require more of a, of a, uh, of a reason to criticise your head of state than just being supposedly a subject to that head of state. I mean... Uh, the moment somebody claims the right to rule over me by birth rate, I think I sort of automatically adopt the right to criticise him too. I'm not the one who requires... Just to be clear, you'd rather be ruled by Boris Johnson? I'm not the one who requires... Would you rather be ruled by Boris Johnson? I'd rather have an elected head of state, yes. Yeah, like Boris Johnson or sure, Liz yes. Truss. I'd, I'd much rather... You can see the problem with elected heads of state. They're often yeah, complete... They're not, do you not see stability in, in the royal family in the sense that they are have always been there and kind of, you know, if they do continue, will always be there, whereas politicians kind of come and go. Yeah. Yes. Poli and politicians, you know, are, are in in one minute and then somebody does something and all of a sudden they're ousted. And, and also, it's typically... You'll always have kind of 50% of, of the country that dislikes any particular kind of head of state, you know? And, and so aren't the figures just on paper for the royal family better than any, than any politician in history. Perhaps, but aren't you troubled by the incessant referral to these people as highness and majesty? Highness is a relative... Well, I'll tell you what I'm more offended by. Highness is a relative... I'll tell you what I'm more offended by. Higher than what, Piers? I'm more offended... Higher than what? And on what grounds? Let me tell you. I'm more offended by calling Boris Johnson the right honourable gentleman. We okay. could probably do with getting, All right. getting rid of that. So when too, it yeah. comes to titles, that gives me more of a problem than calling Charles king. Anyway, got to leave it there.